welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 276th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk all about the art of mise en place. Now this is a listener recommendation of an episode that um, I have been thinking about and trying to figure out how to put together uh, for the last few months and I'm excited to bring it to you and hopefully break down how you too can create your own mise en place based on how you cook in your own kitchen. This week's Petit Plaisir is a lighthearted television series that Anglophiles will enjoy and maybe just anyone who enjoys a good lighthearted storyline. Um, so stay tuned for that at the end of today's episode. But let's get into today's topic. Mise en place. What it really means in literal translation is set in place. But we often hear it described as meaning everything in its place, which it means the same thing, but literally set in place. Now, that was something I didn't know um, until I started to investigate into this topic. But perhaps part of the reason cooking and baking can feel rewarding as well as relaxing is that there is a science to it, an official science as to how things occur and cook and and come together and, and, and make their magic. But also the unofficial science is something that even the most novice cook in a kitchen can quickly learn, mise en place. But what exactly is it? And what is the art of a truly effective mise en place? That is what we're going to talk about today in today's episode. When I attended both Patricia Wells and Suman Hermalumis' cooking classes in France, mise en place was de rigueur. Each day upon arrival into their respective kitchens, we would go to our assigned cooking stations. The food was already either prepared and arranged in the necessary bowls, or at the very least, the ingredients were waiting to be prepared along with all the necessary bowls. As well, the recipe was clearly typed and propped up and ready to go to ensure ease of preparation. Now, I've included many different pictures from both these classes in today's show notes. So if you want to stop by and take a look at what I mean by how the stations were set up, please do visit the show notes at simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 276. But it certainly made the process less intimidating, especially when you're not even cooking in your own kitchen. And you're cooking with people you've never met before until that week of cooking. If nothing else, it really reiterates how mise en place simplifies the process. As you're going to see in some of the images that I've included in today's show notes, I was in awe and absolutely inspired by the organization in both kitchens. From Patricia Wells having multiple ceramic canisters complete with a label for multiple spatulas, peelers, and any other tools she would need to have her students use. To Susan Herman's knives neatly and safely stored in the middle of her wooden custom kitchen island. Every kitchen tool had a home and all of the items we would need or that were regularly used were easy to find and thoughtfully placed where they would be the most handy to grab while cooking. Now, while mise en place often brings our attention to the recipe or the meal we are cooking at the moment and the ingredients that are needed, in a larger context, mise en place is your kitchen, how you arrange it, how you work within it well, and the tools you welcome into your artistic space, your battery de cuisine. I have found in my own kitchen, especially in my kitchen um, that was my rental for the last four years, to be indeed an artist's sanctuary of sorts because You are creating, you are exploring with the food that you bring in and eat on your own as well as serve to others and with cook with others as well. Part of why I loved that kitchen so much and that kitchen is shown in both seasons one and two of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen, the cooking show that is associated with this um, podcast and the blog is due to how I felt completely at ease moving about in it, having enough space for everything I needed, but nothing in excess, and everything being easy to locate and quickly so. I am currently, as many of you know, curating my new kitchen into a similar space so that I feel absolutely comfortable moving from here to there and finding exactly what I need. 
it does take time um, to figure that out, to know how you move in a space and what you need as, as you grow and change as a cook. I look forward to making progress on my own kitchen. Um, if all goes well, this particular spring is when it'll start going into full force. Now, I'm not changing anything structurally. That's the nice part about it. It's all aesthetic. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll be able to see it season three that will premiere this fall in 2020. But in the meantime, I am keeping in mind how a kitchen must be organized, how it needs to function for the cook that calls it home. That is the foundation of Mise en Place. And so let's talk about the benefits first and then how to create your own very successful Mise en Place each time you step into your own kitchen. So there are four basic but fundamentally awesome benefits of welcoming Mise en Place into your kitchen. Number one, it's going to ensure that you are preparing the recipe that you want to enjoy. And I'll explain what I mean by that more in detail in a second. But this idea of you want to eat this, and so this is going to make sure it happens. Mise en Place is the foundation for making that happen. It's also going to save you time. Once you figure out how to do it and do it for for yourself in your kitchen, it's going to make it so much quicker to go from start to finish. It's also going to save the food, um, as we'll talk about with a few of the points later in today's episode. You're not going to be wasting or overcooking any food because your attention is going to be get, be given to what you're doing. And more importantly, I think after all of these three things are tended to, it's going to deepen your enjoyment of the cooking experience. Part of the reason I think some people, and I, I you know, early in my cooking career, I was frustrated with cooking too. I didn't have the right utensils. I didn't have sharp knives. And it's not fun when you don't have sharp knives, as you all know, <laughs> if you are in the kitchen. Um, having the right tools, having the ingredients that are, are quality ingredients makes so it makes such a profound and extraordinarily amazing difference. Um, and so this is another component to add to your skill set when it comes to stepping into the kitchen. So those are the four benefits of welcoming mise en place into your kitchen. Now, how do we mise en place, so to speak? Well, I have eight steps on how to do it in order. Number one, determine what type of mise en place you will need. Now, in theory, you will eventually come to a point where you tend to mise en place, and I'm using this (laughs) as a a verb, so to speak, now, Um, but it will start to become habit. Each recipe, if you cook it multiple times, you will have in your mind knowing exactly what you need and you'll just go to it. You'll just go and grab it. Um, And if you have um, a new recipe, you'll still have a process that you go through. It will become a habit and that's the beautiful part of it. It's going to be a unique way that you do it. So just because one chef or cook does it one way doesn't mean you have to do it exactly the same way. You're not going to see me in my kitchen neatly lined up, straight rows with everything in it, um, perfectly every time. And, and you'll see this on my cooking show if you've watched it or if you go watch my, any of my episodes. I tend to my mise en place before I press record. And it doesn't maybe look super organized to the onlooker, but to me, I know where everything is. I grab it quickly. I know how to where to where when I need to grab it and it's ready to go so I'm not wasting any time. Yours will be unique to you. If you are making a dish frequently, such as for myself, I have the same breakfast every morning, then your mise en place is going to be a little different, but it's going to be, for example, my steel oats is in a canister right by my stove with a quarter cup measuring cup right in the bin or the canister so that that's exactly what I need. So I just go in, scoop, plop, put it with my butter, which is right on the other side of my stove, toast it, all of the ingredients right there. The salt, psh, right there. The only thing that's not on the counter every single morning when I wake up is the cream if I'm going to use it. And then the water goes in after it's been boiled. Everything's right there. Even what I dress my steel oats with, the sliced almonds, the raisins, the honey, it's all right there in a canister next to my stove because I want to have that breakfast and I have it every single day and it saves me so much time. But it's a different way of using mise en place. So it doesn't always have to be Um, like I said, what you see sometimes with chefs and cooks on television, you're going to make it your own. Now, mise en place can be as simple as having your go-to items, as I just talked about, at the ready at all times. But it can also be for that detailed recipe, in which case all of the ingredients are pre-measured and placed in their own separate dishes and bowls. So every single dish, 
every different recipe, or if you're not going by a recipe that what the meal you're going to make, it's going to be unique to that particular meal. So determine first what kind of mise en place you will need. That's number one. Number two, read the entire recipe twice. Not only do you want to read the ingredients list, but be sure to read the instructions as well. And why I recommend and why I recommend twice is often I will read too quickly the first time and I will accidentally skip over something. Now, even if you are unlike me and you are a very close reader the first time through, reading it twice confirms the order you will need the ingredients as well as how they should be prepared. So slice, dice, left hole, etc. Now back to the ingredients. Do you have what you need? Enough of what you need. Double check that. If preparing your mise en place ahead of time, either the morning of or the day or two before, begin making a list of what you need to pick up at the market and how much. Meaning, do I already have it? Is it already in my epistory? And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And if not, what do I need? How much? So that's part of the preparation of mise en place well before you even step into the kitchen. Read the recipe twice. Number three, find the necessary dishes, bowls, containers that you're going to need. Now, as you become fluent in your kitchen, knowing which dishes you enjoy preparing and eating and sharing, you will, with time, begin to have the necessary dishes and bowls and canisters, or excuse me, containers already on hand. But this does take time. So along the way to building your battery de cuisine, literally translated into kitchen artillery, otherwise known as kitchenware, Use dishes that work well for what you need. They may not be perfect. They may be a little too large, but at least you have something to put the stuff you need in. All you need is something that works. And again, as you start to really get to know your your kitchen language, you will find those tools. You will find those bowls. You'll get those sizes and you're going to have fun doing it. I know that I am and I'm still in that process and it's a lot of fun to go treasure hunting. So that's number three. Number four, find the necessary kitchen tools you will need and have them at the ready as well. Along with having the ingredients you need, locating and having at the ready the necessary tools will also speed up the process and increase your enjoyment of the cooking process. Begin with a sharpened knife and the proper knife for what you are doing. And having each of these tools ready to work for you is an often unstated but vital part of the effective mise en place. Now in the same vein, make sure what you need is clean. What I've discovered in my cooking experience is that I use a lot of spatulas and there are a handful of other things that I use a lot more often than not. And so I realized, oh, I need to buy more spatulas because there might be one in the dishwasher. I know I could probably quickly clean it, but this saves me time. And sometimes I need two at the same time come doing two different things and so on and so forth. So what kind of items do you need in multiple? And again, this is where your kitchen is going to be designed to you. And I think for me, that's kind of like a capsule wardrobe in many ways. It is this tailoring of what makes your kitchen time become a symphony. And that's a lot of fun figuring out exactly what those tools and, and um, procedures really are for you in the layout of your kitchen. So have some fun with that. In fact, this morning, I recently realized oh, I need another Pyrex four cup um, liquid measuring cup um, because I use sometimes two at the same time for different things that I'm doing that happen to be going on at the same time. Like, oh, that might be something I could pick up when it goes, when, there, when there's a sale um, because as we know, there are many different sales that pop up throughout the year. I'm going to put that on my list and when there's an opportunity to save some money, I'm going to go buy one of those. Um, so this is again an opportunity to keep that list handy and keep adding to it um, as you go. Now, five is prepare the food as needed. So you're all prepped with your tools. You have all the different containers and dishes and bowls that you need. You have all the ingredients that you need. You've read the recipe twice. Here we go. Five is prepare the food as needed. So from washing to peeling to deveining and cleaning the seafood or meat, tend to the food. So that as the recipe calls for each ingredient, all you have to do is quickly add it to the pan or bowl or grill it or grill, or you get the idea. So this is the part where you get the food all ready. And if you know anything about working in a kitchen, which I know some of you may, um, I myself haven't cooked in a kitchen, but I've been a waiter um, at a kitchen where there was many different chefs doing all sorts of all sorts of different prep. Um, a lot of the the major part of their work is the food prep prior to the evening dinner set. Um, that's what takes up a lot of time and therefore saves you time when you're doing the actual cooking. 
So number five is simply prepare the food as needed. So number six is place the food and or ingredients in order of use in the recipe. Now, depending upon whether you are right or left-handed, that's something to always keep in mind when you're laying at your kitchen, place the ingredients on the preferred side and in the order they will be added to the recipe. If ingredients will not be used for some time, you can kind of place them further away so you won't knock them over or accidentally add them. So that's number six. Put the food in order um, according to when you're going to add it to the recipe. Number seven, have a large bowl for discards and items to be taken to the compost or garbage. Now, Rachel Ray creatively called hers the thanks for coming bowl. And having such an item as part of your mise en place is a simple way of keeping your kitchen clean or at least cleaner than it would be otherwise as you make your way through the meal preparation. Now, a large bowl enables there to be more workable space so you can swiftly move from one task to another without having to constantly clean up along the way. So number seven is to have a large bowl for all those discarded trimmings and peelings and and all the different things you're getting rid of as you're preparing the food. And last but not least on the how-to part of our discussion today is just something to be aware of. And it has to do with making sure the food you've purchased gets to be enjoyed and enjoy the way it can be enjoyed. And it's number eight is refrain from multitasking. As tempting as it may be, doing more than the task of cooking while you are preparing a meal increases the chances of overcooking, burning, and therefore ruining the ingredients you have thoughtfully welcomed into your kitchen. Now, speaking from experience, even when I just cook my breakfast in the morning, from time to time, I will go into my office and while the steel oats are cooking, because we know it takes them about 10 to 15 minutes to cook, and I will become so engrossed with something in my computer or a project or an email that I'm writing that I lose all track of time. (laughs) So it's not that we do it intentionally, but again, we have to remember not to waste or or ruin the food that we have and be present and enjoy that process. I sincerely find myself becoming so much more present when I'm in my kitchen. I think that's part of the reason I find it so therapeutic is that cooking focuses my attention and I have to pay attention and I enjoy it. Now, this doesn't mean you can't have a friend or your partner or your children sitting at the island, you know, chatting with you as you're doing this. We're talking about trying to get two things done at once. Um, and so that's, we need our attention on the food we're cooking. Um, and that is something to, just as a reminder, if nothing else, um, we're going to make sure we have great food and this will help us do that. So that's number eight. Now, I'm not done yet talking about mise en place. I have a few more ideas I want to share with you to improve your mise en place experience. And I'm going to share those when I come back from introducing you to the sponsors of today's episode. I'll see you back here in just a few moments. Working out is hard. It's always been hard. Even when it's easy, it's still pretty hard. Bomba socks cannot change that, but they can make it more comfortable. So if your resolution is to get fit this year, start by getting socks that keep up every step of the way. Personally, I am wearing Bomba socks when I'm working out every single morning when I walk my dogs and then when I go on the hike in the, <laughs> in the evening or the afternoon. And even I double them up when I go skiing as well. These are well-made socks and they fit my toes and my heels <laughs> really well. Each one of us does a lot of different things to stay active. So Bombas made a lot of different performance socks designed for everything from running to hiking to cycling and more. As I said, I go skiing in mine. Whether you're very into sports or planning on getting very into sports, Bombas can help with performance socks in styles made specifically for basketball, tennis, running, golf, and more. They're made with a lightweight poly cotton blend, which means no matter how hard you're working, your feet will stay cool, dry, and comfortable, never sweaty. Constantly pausing your treadmill to adjust twisted, bunched up socks is enough to make anyone ready to quit. That's why Bombas are designed with left-right contouring and a Y-stitched heel, so they stay perfectly in place. This is so true. There have been so many different times where I've worn other types of socks, And based on how I'm wearing them, they will eventually come off as I'm running or doing whatever I'm doing. Bombas socks have always stayed put. So go to bombas.com slash sophisticate today and get 20% off your first order. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate for 20% off bombas.com slash sophisticate. 
Orate is fine jewelry made in New York City, founded by women for women. Pieces range from classic to statement to completely original. Orate makes the jewelry you've always wanted but could never find. Because it's all real gold, you can wear it and never have to take it off. Shower, sport, sleep, cook, anything. It's jewelry for life. And all Orate pieces come with a lifetime warranty because they know it lasts. Now, because Orate sells direct to you without the middleman markup, they can offer the same quality as traditional Fifth Avenue brands at a fraction of the cost. Also, Orate is ethically made in New York City, empowering women with the best jewelry options without sacrificing style. Orate was started by two friends during brunch when one got a green finger from an overpriced ring, sparking a conversation about how they were fed up with the traditional jewelry market. Orate is looking to set the standard for women because they deserve the best. Now I have had the opportunity to wear one of Orate's pendant necklaces, and I have been wearing it with everything from my wrap dresses to school, from my buttoned up collared shirt and jeans. It is versatile. It's beautiful. And it wears so well. It's sophisticated. And it sincerely is my type of style. It's simple and sophisticated. But there's simple styles from earrings to necklaces to rings, all at fair prices. Now, for the Simple Sophisticate listener, you have the opportunity to take 15% off your first Orate purchase. Go to oratenewyork.com slash sophisticate and use the promo code sophisticate. Again, that's A-U-R-A-T-E, New York dot com slash sophisticate and use the promo code sophisticate for 15% off your first orate purchase. Rothy's has quickly grown to a most loved gotta have them brand. It's no surprise they have over 1000 nearly perfect reviews. They're stylish, sustainable, comfortable, and washable all in one pair of shoes. They're the perfect flats for life on the go. I've had the opportunity to have my own pair of Rothy flats, choosing to wear their Merino camel pointed toe flats. I have been wearing them to school when heels just aren't what I want to wear. Because as you know, Simple Sophisticate listeners, I do enjoy wearing my heels. But when I need my flats and I always need a quality pair of flats, I have been loving and going to Rothy's each time. The camel color was an exclusive print for a certain amount of time. So they do have styles that are in a limited edition and for a certain amount of time only. So scoop up the ones you love quickly. What I also appreciate about these is the comfort level. I cannot express how comfortable they are. More and more staff members have pointed out my shoes recently and they quickly ask, are those Rothy's? And I quickly say with a smile, yes, they are. And they ask how comfortable they are. And I say without hesitation, absolutely. In fact, after eight hours of teaching, I want to keep wearing them. They are like a slipper, but they look super chic and stylish. Rothy's are seamlessly knit using thread made from plastic water bottles. So they're ultra comfortable as soon as you slip them on. That's right. There's a zero break in period in these shoes. Plus Rothy's always come with free shipping and free returns and exchanges. No risk, no worries, no reason not to try. And another major bonus, they're fully machine washable. Every time they need a refresh, you can simply toss them in the washing machine. It's like getting a fresh pair every laundry day. Rothy's owns and operates their manufacturing workshop where they prioritize sustainability every step of the way. Plus Rothy's ship directly in their shoebox. No unnecessary packaging. These are feel-good shoes in more than one way. Go to rothys.com slash simple to get your new favorite flats. That's rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash simple. Comfort, style, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash simple today. So as we continue talking about mise en place, I came up with a list of five things to improve your mise en place experience. Now, the how-tos were just talked about, the eight how-tos. Now we know how it kind of functions or how it kind of 
chronologically goes in order, but what about making sure that you are having the best experience with your, with the, each time you step into your kitchen? I think the first thing to keep in mind is something we've talked about in episode 109, and it's to keep a well-stocked epicery, or in other words, pantry, where you have all those items that aren't the produce or the items that you need to cook and use immediately upon purchase. These are your salts. This is your lemons. These are your aromatics. These are all the different spices and herbs, all those things that you're going to need throughout the year um, to finish all these different meals and recipes that you want to cook. So in episode 109, I detail a list of 34 items to have in your epicerie, but I also go into it in great detail um, in my second book in chapter 12, Living the Simply Luxurious Life. And I talk about a bunch of different cooking skills as well, um, basic cooking skills that will enable you to cook just about anything in your kitchen. And that's all in my second book in chapter 12. But that's number one, that will improve your mise en place experience. Keep a well-stocked epicerie. Number two is to begin to gradually pick up small bowls and dishes that catch your eye at secondhand shops, yard sales, and antique boutiques, even brocantes if you have the opportunity to travel to France or to other places around the world, um, just dishes that catch your eye. Not only will this be a fun treasure hunt, but they will add to your signature style in your kitchen, um, and you'll have stories to tell as you're making these meals and people are you know, sitting down watching you cook or cooking with you. Um, it just really makes your kitchen your your kitchen. So that's number two. I'm, I'm in the process of doing that now and I have been for a while and I'm so enjoying it. Number three is to assess what tools you need in your kitchen and invest in quality items. Each one of us, again, will have a different battery um, de cuisine that we want to have in our kitchen based on what we love to cook. And it's important to pay attention to that and not just get something because your favorite cook or chef says you should. If that's not your style, don't do it. You can celebrate what they're doing, but you don't have to bring it into yours. Um, So be paying attention to what you need and high quality items, starting with your knives. Buy quality knives and just keep them sharpened. You absolutely should invest in good knives. That will change your entire cooking experience. That's that was the game changer for me when I was a young, young girl. When I finally realized knives that are sharp make the experience positive, I was all in. But up until then, the knives weren't sharpened that I was cooking with um, for whatever reason, and I was just confused. And I was like, "Why would anyone enjoy cooking if you can't cut and you can't peel and it's not easy and it's frustrating? You almost cut your fingers off." Ah, then I learned and everything changed. So that's number three, assess what tools you need in your kitchen and invest in quality items. And that takes time. Gradually just start building up your repertoire. Equally for number four, upon this assessment, begin to edit and or remove tools you do not need to provide more space for the items you do and then making those items you actually have easier to find. Um, again, that's part of the process of getting to know know yourself and who you are in the kitchen. And last but not least, set up your kitchen so that it works for you. As I mentioned at the top of today's episode, I included more than a few pictures of both Patricia Wells's kitchen in Provence and Susan Herman Lomas's kitchen in, um, Louvier. And you'll see that they've each set it up in such a way that works for them. And that's the key. And granted, they're teaching classes, so they're going to probably have more utensils and tools than most of us will have. But doesn't mean we can't learn from how they've organized it because they're going to be cooking around the stove. Well, what items do they have around the stove? What do they always grab for? Um, I, I think seeing how other chefs organize their kitchen, their actual kitchen that they cook in, and both of these kitchens are the kitchens these women cook in can teach us a lot um, from observation. I know that I felt like I was in my own personal Disneyland when I was in Patricia Wells's kitchen and Susan's kitchen. I couldn't take enough pictures um, and they were very kind to let me do that. But I was just trying to learn as much as I could absorb it because I knew my eyes were not going to be able to see them again. Um, So it was one of those things where you just learn by observing um, and then set it up so it works for you. So those are the five things to do to improve your mise en place experience. I I honestly feel so fortunate to have had the opportunities that I've shared with you today um, to be in both those cooking classes. And I don't take them for granted. And I continue to incorporate their ideas into my daily cooking practice. Um, The primary purpose for mise en place is to make your time in the kitchen successful. Impressively, the number of dishes and the multi-course meals each class would enjoy every single day at these cooking classes when we sat down for a couple of hours 
at a glance, you would think have been impossible for us to cook six, seven, sometimes eight dishes with only five to eight people. And we did it every single time and we had fun doing it um, because it was broken down into clear steps. The recipes were easy to follow. The ingredients were there and ready to go. The amounts were prepped. So it was all but impossible. That is the beauty of mise en place. Hopefully you too will find even more pleasure when you step into your kitchen, when you incorporate mise en place into your repertoire. I certainly have an even deeper appreciation as well as fondness for the time I spend cooking and preparing and of course, enjoying the meals that are created. I've included on the show notes videos as well as detailed posts of each of my experiences at these classes. If you're curious, would like to check them out. They're on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 276 as well on that show note, on these show notes, you'll find pictures of mise en place. So you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. I've also included a couple of posts and our uh, archive posts and episodes from the past, um, 15 kitchen tools to cook anything like a pro, simple ways to transform your kitchen. So from the decor and setting it up so it's tailored to you, as well as nine ways to organize your kitchen to not only improve your health, but also help out the planet. And if you haven't checked out the Simply Luxurious Kitchen cooking show, I've included a link to that as well. Now I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is a British cozy mystery series that debuted in 2014 called Agatha Raisin. Now, this is a fictional detective that is is based on the novel series by Marion Chesney. But the author's name you will find when you're searching for these will be M.C. Beaton. Um, That's her pseudonym. Um, So if you like the show, you may enjoy her cozy mystery series um, and her novels as well. But it aired, as I mentioned, 2014. It's already finished filming its its third season. And you can view it on Acorn TV. Now, the main character is Agatha Raisin. And she is a woman who is very successful in her public relations career as an agent for PR. And she lives in London, but she decides to retire early to a small town in the Cotswolds called Carsley. And um, she begins to just accidentally or by happenstance turn into the amateur sleuth of the town. Um, it's a lot of fun. She has a lovely little cottage right in the heart of the town. And it's actually set, um, the actual town that it's set in is Wiltshire. What I appreciate about this series is, number one, it's not dark and and it's not a Midsummer Murders, um, which I love, by the way, but it isn't that serious and it's not that, what do I want to say, gory. Not that those are super gory, but they can be a little bit more so. This is very lighthearted and it's fun because she as a character is is growing and changing as well. Um, she's not married, um, although that does come into play in one of the episodes with regards to is she still married to her <laughs> once husband or not? But she is a strong woman who, as you'll see, dresses as though she's still in London at times, always looking fantastic. And um, she just has a curiosity, an insatiable curiosity. So lots of fun. Now, you can watch both season one and season two on Acorn right now, as well as the first episode of season three. There are three more episodes in season three that have not become available on Acorn TV, but they will soon because they already finished airing in Britain this last fall. So stay tuned for those. I would highly recommend beginning with the pilot episode, which for whatever reason on Amazon, if you have your Acorn subscription, isn't on the subscription page. You're going to have to just look for it. Agatha Raisin as another entry and look for the pilot um, episode, which is called The Quiche of Death. So begin with that one. That'll kind of set you up for what and why she comes to the country, um, sees her retiring from her job, and then then start season one. So that was something that I... Um, figured out quickly. Once I'd started season one, I was like, wait a second, she's already there. How'd she get there? Oh, go watch the pilot episode first, the quiche of death. That's the first one. And then you'll follow through with all the other episodes. So here is the trailer of season one of Agatha Raisin. Ooh, charming. uh, Hello. (laughs) 
for a reason, new to the village. But what are you going to do in the Cotswolds, Aggie? I've always wanted to build a home, fit in. You? Yes, me. Are you off to a wedding? No. Tell me, what normally wins the quiche competition? The winner of the best quiche is... Agatha Raisin. Yes. He was poisoned. It was my quiche. I did not murder anyone. Then who did? Then you prove there's a murderer in the village, people will stop blaming you. I'm telling you there's something going on here. There are suspects everywhere. Stop playing detective. I used to be someone, you know. And now, the highlight of my week is... Meets must! Seeing Mrs. Bobble urinate by the side of the road. Oh. Oh, Agatha, I need your help. Where do I fit in? I need you to find out who killed Jessica. This is a police matter. Do not start investigating it. Do start investigating it. What is wrong with you people? I'll have you know, where I come from, I do not commit murders, I solve them. So that was actually an overview of the entire season one. But um, again, as you probably noticed there, she definitely is a city goer coming into the country, but she starts to fit in very well. And she remains true to herself um, as a character throughout. They do a nice job of maintaining that um, that uh, independence and curiosity throughout the ti- entire two seasons. Now, who stars as Agatha Raisin? Raisin has been played by Penelope Keith on BBC Radio 4. And for the television series, what you are what you just saw there is going to be played by Ashley Jensen. You're going to have eight full episodes in season one, and they're about an hour long. And then season two and season three are an hour and a half long episodes, and they have already run through. Keep an eye out for them on Acorn TV via your Prime membership or on just Acorn TV's subscription page. That's Agatha Raisin. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Before I wrap up today, I want to share a few reviews and and express my gratitude for your time in writing these detailed um, reviews of why you enjoy the show. This first one comes from Australia and it's titled Love This Podcast. Greetings from the sunny Gold Coast, Australia. I've been listening to this podcast since the very beginning and still very much enjoy it. Would really like a podcast dedicated to practical tips for a simply luxurious grocery shop. I'm nibbling radish and Dijon mustard looking out at the ocean and thinking that it would be really great to know how to do a good shop all the time. Minimal waste, maximum flavor. Thank you. Well, and I appreciate this too. So thank you very much for tuning in Kathleen Millie. I really appreciate you sharing what you'd like to have on the podcast. In fact, as I mentioned at the top of today's episode, today was a reader recommended or listener recommended show topic. So this is something that I've taken note of. And while there are some posts on this, and I'll provide post links to this, there is a a post on how to go grocery shopping and enjoy it. Um, I wrote that this past year. Um, I'll also think about how to bring this into an episode. So thank you, Kathleen, for your feedback, for your time, and for tuning in for these past six seasons. I so appreciate your time and interest. Now, this next one comes from the United States, and it's just simple, simply titled Live Your Best Life. It's fun, useful, inspiring, covers a range of interesting topics. Thank you very much. If you two are enjoying the show and would like to leave a review, letting other listeners know what they're going to discover when they tune in and why you enjoy it, I really do appreciate it. It definitely makes a positive difference, even if you just leave a ranking. So thank you to everyone who already has. And for those who are thinking about it, I sincerely will appreciate it when you do. And maybe your review will be shared on the air in upcoming episodes episodes. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful week. And until next week, bon journée. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. 
to stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.